Good morning. Today is Wednesday of the fifth week of our great penitential season of Lent. And we are in the middle of the fifth week of Lent, as I said, which used to be called in when I was a, a young boy, Passion Week, which would distinguish the fifth week from next week, which of course uh, begins with Palm Sunday and is Holy Week leading us right into the Paschal Triduum. The uh, idea behind the way the church used to refer to this fifth week as Passion Week, it, to distinguish it from Holy Week, uh, is found uh, in the Gospel readings, which really give us an indication towards the end of last week, the fourth week, uh, especially last Friday's Gospel, where in the course of that Gospel, uh, St. John the Evangelist uh, makes a, a very uh, telling comment about how the, the Jews were so determined uh, to get rid of Jesus. They were, they were uh, something like stalking him wherever he went. They were there. They uh, criticized everything he said and did. Uh, they criticized him for curing people of illnesses, restoring sight to the blind and so forth because he dared to do it on the Sabbath. Uh, and uh, in that gospel from last Friday, St. John writes that uh, they wanted to arrest Jesus then and there, but he says his hour had not come. That term, the hour of Jesus, is what really gives uh, meaning to this fifth week of Lent, which again used to be called Passion Week. But during this week, what we find is that comment by St. John the Evangelist about the hour of Jesus had not yet come and so the Jews didn't arrest him. This now becomes very, very clear in this fifth week. And each day uh, of this fifth week of Lent, the Gospels uh, build on that uh, very uh, dire, very dark, if you will, uh, intent on the part of the, the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees to get rid of and kill Jesus. And so their plottings become clearer and clearer. And all the while, Jesus continues to teach, to heal, to console, to forgive, uh, Monday's gospel was from the 8th chapter of St. John, the woman caught in adultery whom the uh, Pharisees drag and throw her in front of Jesus. And Jesus makes that uh, very telling judgment on them. And believe me, since he's God, he's the only one who can make those judgments. Uh, he's, you recall the famous response of Jesus to them. Uh, you know, they said, uh, according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. And that was a serious crime uh, if for the Jewish people. And so Jesus says, let he who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. And he silences them, but he doesn't convert them. They're determined more than ever to uh, persecute and kill Jesus. And that's what gives that hour of Jesus its intensity, its, its really, its, its full meaning in this fifth week uh, of the Lenten season. And of course, we know that Holy Week itself uh, begins with this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, and eventually ending in his crucifixion and death on Mount Calvary. But for all of us, we know because we live uh, not just through Good Friday, but we live in Holy Saturday with great hope 
and joyful expectation for what occurs on Easter Sunday. And again, we understand uh, the meaning of Easter far better that good will always triumph over evil. And in all of this, the church is urging us to pay close attention, examine our own consciences, our daily lives, and rid ourselves of those sins and those evil inclinations that in one way or another form that barrier between us and the Lord. It would be a good thing, perhaps, during this fifth week, uh, reflect on what you received and what you heard when you received ashes on your forehead on Ash Wednesday. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Or the, the other formula, uh, believe and be faithful to the gospel. Both of those remind us of our mortality, that this is not our permanent home, and that there is an urgency for us to rid ourselves of those sins, those inclinations to sin, and strengthen our faith, our hope, and our charity through the frequent reception of the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist and reconciliation. So may these final days of the Lenten season be days of true grace for all of you, and may God bless you during this fifth week of Lent.